Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now around 18 months ago, back when I had first started creating content for YouTube, I filmed the beginning of a video about my friend's very rare Ford Sierra Sapphire. This Ford Sierra Sapphire. At the time, the car had been in my barn for a couple of years and Graham had collected the money together to put this car through a restoration. So this Sierra was about to go through what I thought would be two or three months worth of restoration. Little did I know then, it would actually take me 18 months before I'd be back in this car again and able to finish this video. Anyway, we're here now. The weather's looking okay. Looks like it's threatening rain over there, so I better get on with it. So, one and a half years in the making, this is the restoration of Graham's Ford Sierra Sapphire GLS. Hello and welcome back to Pentor Cars Cornish Car Collectors. Now you join us today at the Pentor Cars Barn where we keep a few of our own collection and we'll have a proper look in here one day on a future video. But we're here today on a lovely sunny day in Cornwall for a very specific reason. A good friend of Pentor Cars, Graham, has been storing a very rare Sierra Sapphire in the barn since 2017 awaiting restoration. And the great news is here in 2021, Graham's got the money together to get the car out, have some mechanical work done into the body shop for a full respray. We're really excited to track the progress of this and look forward to featuring it on this video. So join us now as we get the car out of the barn. We've got to move a few to do it, so it's going to be a logistical challenge, but get the car out of the barn and uh, feature the restoration over the course of this video. But in the meantime, please do leave us a comment and hit like. We really appreciate it and do subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell icon so you're notified about future videos. Thanks so much, let's get the car out. So we've moved the three cars that were in its way now it's time to take this cover off this Sierra. It's been under here since 2017. Let's get it off. Look at that, it looks great. Can't believe it, it started first time. We had to put a bit of air in the near side front tire, but the tire's holding the air well. So for this car now, it's off to have some mechanicals done before we take it to the body shop for a full respray. The Sierra Sapphire GLS is a rare car, and the condition that this one's gonna be in by the time that we finish with it, it's gonna make it possibly the best in the country. So do look out for it at car shows across the Southwest. Now we've got the unenviable task of putting all these cars back in the barn. Um, what have we got here? Out of shot, we've got a Ford Fiesta. We've got a 206 GTI 180. You'll have seen that on a previous video. We've also got the Mini Cooper S Works, which again, you've seen on a previous video. We've actually sold that. It's going out next week. We've got a Rover 25 GTI that we look forward to featuring in the future. Two Rover 75s, a saloon and an estate. The estate is the workhorse, supports the Pentor Cars fleet. And a Ford Focus Mark One gear, again, out of shot. So we're gonna move these back and uh, join us as we start to feature restoring this car. We can't wait.
Well, here it is. Now, I love Sierras, and in fact, I haven't really got round to sharing my own Sierras here on the channel yet. But for now, let's turn our attention to this, this excellent Ford Sierra Sapphire GLS. It must be, well, it's the best around, the best in the UK, maybe even the best in the world. In fact, if you know of a better Ford Sierra Sapphire GLS, please do let me know in the comments below. Right, before we take a look at the work that's been done on this car, let's take a quick look back, first of all, at the history of the Ford Sierra Sapphire. If you want to learn a little bit more about the history of the Ford Sierra, please do watch my video on my Ford Sierra GL that I owned up until recently. I'll pop a link in the description below. Today then, let's take a look at the history of the Ford Sierra Sapphire, the Sierra with a boot. Now, in a departure from tradition, back in 1982, Ford launched the brand new Sierra, available in hatchback and estate body styles only, no saloon. Now the Sierra had replaced the outgoing and extremely popular Ford Cortina, produced in Ford's traditional three box saloon form. It's widely known that the reception to the all new hatchback Sierra, nicknamed the Jelly Mold, was not great. It took a long time for the buying public to make the switch from Cortina to Sierra. In fact, until the launch of the Orion in 1983, the only saloon bodied car available in the Ford Europe range was the much larger and expensive Granada. The Orion in part filled the gap in the saloon range left by the Cortina. In fact, Ford found that consumers were more interested in that saloon than they had expected. And the lucrative premium executive market was filled with popular saloons from BMW, Mercedes and the like. Ford needed to compete and they addressed this in 1987 with the production of a saloon version of the Sierra. And here in the UK, this was called the Sapphire. Despite the boot, the Sapphire was clearly distinguishable by the different front grille. The Sapphire sold really quite well, but over time it's become synonymous with its high performance halo model, the Sapphire Cosworth. With the other Sapphire models really becoming, well, confined to history outside of the, well, maybe the 2000E which was the premium specification Sapphire with its unique leather interior and paint color options. Very few survivors remain. And well, that brings me nicely onto this, this 1993 Ford Sierra Sapphire GLS. This was marketed by Ford back in the day as a sports car for the driving enthusiast. The GLS came with factory fitted boot lid spoiler, just like the Cosworth, sports suspension and 14 inch alloy wheels. The interior has the Hawley fabric and to complete that sports appearance, the diamond white of this car is complemented with the red side stripe. And it's a well specced car too. Along with the alloy wheels, the GLS came with front electric windows and electric mirrors, power assisted steering and ABS, front fog lamps, headlight washers and wipers and a sunroof. The 2 litre GLS is fitted with Ford's 2 litre direct overhead cam electronic fuel injection motor producing 125 brake horsepower which is delivered through the rear wheels. It's a lot of fun to drive. In fact, it drives really well and there is no reason that you couldn't daily afford Sierra even today. That's a Cosworth is something that Graham hears all the time when using this car and when taking it to car shows. No, no it is not. It's a far rarer sporting Sierra Sapphire. But not being a Cosworth makes this car considerably less valuable. And what that means is that very few have survived. You see, you need to be, well, brave enough or I suppose stupid enough to buy, keep, maintain and restore one of these. And it was in 2013 that this car found Graham, who was brave enough and passionate enough to take this Sierra on, to save it, and just look at what he's achieved. Back in 1993, when this car was new, well, you'd be lucky to get 10 years service out of a car. And this car is approaching 30 years old. It should be long gone. And the challenge is that, well, restoring this car probably costs about the same, not much less than restoring a Ford Sierra Cosworth. And well, that makes my point and why so many Cosworths still survive and so few of these. And doesn't that make what Graham has done so much more impressive? This car has had a full restoration. Here, take a look.
As I said, Graham bought the Sapphire GLS in 2013 from the previous owner in Scotland and drove it all the way home to near London. It made it with no issues at all. Being 20 years old, it had some cosmetic issues and had gained some additions over the years which were not to Graham's taste. You can see here the tow hitch which was quick to go, plus an aftermarket aerial which was removed and the hole bunged for the time being. Graham swapped the steering wheel for the three spoke and refitted a standard Ford stereo to the car. Also the front and rear bumpers, well they were rough, so Graham had them painted along with the spoiler which was missing its black lip. By this point the GLS was looking very presentable, so Graham attended lots of shows with the car and for a few years he focused on the mechanicals, plus the sourcing of some hard to find missing trim bits like these screw caps in the correct grey. Graham was never entirely happy with the bodywork, Whilst the bumpers had been done, there were a number of age-related imperfections, as well as a botched repair to the driver's door lock and a fair bit of surface corrosion underneath the car. So in 2021, the car went into MK Body Shop for a full respray, which included a replacement driver's door, headlights, new indicators, a new fuel tank to match the underside restoration, and all four wheels were refurbished in their original silver. Graham also sourced a replacement carpet and a very hard to find headlining as the original had been cut to accommodate the upgraded courtesy light panel. It's here pictured with the correct panel and then the new headlining looks very smart indeed. The car looked absolutely mint when finished, as good as new. Graham even went so far as to source a Ford Motorcraft battery. I mentioned earlier how this Sierra Sapphire is one of the last cars on the road. And in fact, having been registered in January 1993, well, it's one of the final Sierras ever registered. And this car is now back to looking exactly how it did back in 1993 when it was new. But being a post-91 car, well, this car has the later dashboard, this kind of curved piece here, as opposed to the boxier dashboard that went before. There was also, as part of the facelift, an alteration to the switch gear here on the right. And I know that Graham has swapped out this steering wheel. So the car originally came with the transit style steering wheel that appeared in some of the later Sierras. So he swapped it out for this three point steering wheel, which is how the car was pictured when it was marketed in the brochure. And this is a far prettier steering wheel. It was a good modification on this car. Now I own a 1992, Ford Sierra XR 4x4 and these two look great together at shows. Owning the hatchback I've always really liked the bespoke rear bench seat fitted to the Sapphire with its integral headrests. It's very smart. Since its restoration this Sapphire is a regular at all the big shows across the southwest and always draws a crowd for both its rarity and its condition. Whatever the future for this car, whether Graham decides to keep it or whether he decides to sell it to another enthusiast so that they can enjoy it and Graham can move on to his next project, what's certain is that this is a super rare Sierra Sapphire saved with lots more miles and lots more years to come, which is brilliant. Now, as I said at the beginning, this has been a long time in the making, this video, but good things come to those who wait and I've very much enjoyed featuring the restoration of this car here on the channel and actually getting to drive it. It really is a lovely thing to drive. I hope that you too have enjoyed seeing the restoration of this Sierra GLS. Now if you like the Sierra content please do stay tuned to the channel. I promise that I will at some point in the future do a full review of my Ford Sierra XR 4x4. It does appear on the channel around a year ago. I took it to the XR Owners Club National Day, so do take a look at that video. But uh, I will be doing a full review on that car. Plus, there may be another Sierra joining my collection in the not too distant future, and that's well worth staying tuned for. But if you have enjoyed the video, please do click like, please do subscribe to the channel, it really helps. And remember, there's lots more Sierra content to come. And do leave me a comment, I'd love to hear from you, and I do try to get back in touch to, with as many of you as I can. 
but thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to take this home now. I brought it out on what was quite a sunny day today, so I'll be taking it back, drying it off, and putting it back in the barn. But uh, thank you so much for joining me, and I do hope to see you again here at the channel in the not-too-distant future. Bye for now. Bye-bye.